Look what I found. Let's have some fun. Well, I guess you know what we're fixing today. Now, one thing, and I'm sorry about it, I don't know what's causing it. My, f my camera wants to flash once in a while. Can't figure it out, been playing with it for an hour. Instead of fixing that, we're gonna fix some of these. I got about five of them here to flash. And I haven't seen anybody really do a video on DIY Flash in uh, Linux. Um, that's how I flash the other ones that I have. It's been a while too, so let's see if anything's changed. Let's do some flashing. Let's get some Tazmoda on these things. So let's open it up. There's a box. There's a piece of paper that says Sonoff. Very exciting. So, jumper. Instructions. Nope. No instructions. Here's this thing. Now to get these open. See how okay, then they push on the other side it don't, so. Go in. Pop it like that. And here again, now the, the top side is the side I'm pushing on, so. Go like that. And get rid of that piece. Now we're going to need to power these up from AC lines, so it's a good idea to leave it in here. So we're going to leave it snapped in there. And you can either take your itty bitty little the tiny tiny jumper right there, or I got another jumper, I got a nice big red one. You need to jump out the pins, let's see, OTA and ground. on. And this basically pulls down a, a GPIO pin which will allow it to go into OTA mode. So you need physical access to the device in order to put it in OTA mode, which that I like. That's nice. And here we got power wire. And these have to be loosened. Those go in there and you push them in all the way. Make sure there's no strands sticking out. Strands hanging out there wouldn't be good. So now we're going to need to be careful with this. Touching here is you got to kind of sink in to touch it, but that's AC mains right there. Don't touch that. There could be AC mains here and here. Don't touch that. Basically, we shouldn't have to touch this. So there's several things that have to happen, and I think Sonoff made some pretty poor choices. It took the community a long time to figure out how to do this because it's such a PIA. The poor choices they made is one, the data has to come from a from an HTTP server. I'm going to use the curl command. I'm going to use some other things. In order for this to work right. A lot of routers and networks have different permissions and weird stuff going on. The best way to do this on a Linux machine is to have a laptop that has Linux running on it of some flavor. It has to have a or a desktop that has a, a wireless access point because you need wireless, you need hard network to the world and you need to create a web server on here, which is simple, I'll show you. And because the data has to come from a web server to go into this to do OTA. They could have just added so that it would take a file. They decided that's not what they want to do. So the data has to come from a web server or it won't take. The first thing we're going to do is to show you how to load Apache. Here's my screen. And the one thing you're going to need, and what, since it's up the screen, but just do that right away, is you're going to have to load the latest version of Tasmoda and you want to get the small release, so you're going to get the Tasmoda Lite version. Do not load minimal. Minimal will not boot. If you load minimal, you're going to be soldering and flashing this thing. You must, must load the Tasmoda Lite. 
and you might as well load the latest version. So pull that down. Doo -doo -doo. Desmoda light, minimal light. This is the one here. You do not want the GZ because there's no firmware in there to uncompress it, so it won't work. You need to load. Uh, I mean, maybe it'll work. I don't know for sure. But I'm not. I didn't. I don't suggest it. You want to try it? Give it a shot. But this is the file that you want to load. You want to click on this and download it. After that, you're going to need uh, a terminal window. It's running uh, Ubuntu 20, latest, up to date. And we're going to put a web server on it, which you can take off after that if you want. And we're going to set the hotspot on it so that the device over here connects to that. First thing we're going to do is load Apache. What this command does is does an update so the binaries are all up to date and the versions are up to date. Then we're going to install Apache. Just like that. Alright, so now we have Apaches loaded here. Next thing we're going to do is make sure Apache is started. So we're going to go, we're going to open up the web browser again and we're going to go to this and see if it's open. And so if you just open the web browser on the same laptop or device that you're doing this with. There, you get to the Apache default of bundle page. So, the, so we know this is running now. This tells us that Yes, indeed, the website is up and running. That's the local, so that's all e as easy as the local web server is to set up. Once it's there, now we have to add a couple files. Basically, we have to add the file that we just downloaded from Tasmoda and put it onto a space where it shows up in the web server. This is going to be to copy the uh, binary over there. This one, Changes permission on the file where the HTML is. This one creates a directory. Now, if it comes up with an error, it just means I've been there before. Okay, so it's already there. Now, this path is not correct here, but basically you change this path and say where it is and then where you're gonna put it. And then you should be able to go to the website, bring up the browser again, a slash slash Tasmoda and hit enter and once you get there you'll see this kind of screen and you see oh Tasmoda light.bin is there All right so now our file is accessible via a web server at the place it needs to be so now let's set up the hotspot here's the command doing something called nm connection editor it's, so let's hit enter and i already have it made so i'll show you the setup here we're going to edit this you need to you need to put in this name exactly as it's stated here you need to go in here and set this as a hotspot because you're only going to be able to talk at 2.4. So just set it to 2.4, like so. Go over here into security. You need to select WPA and WPA2 personal. And then you need the password. And the password is the same. Show the password. I can show this one because this is the standard password. This is the password that, the, that this is expecting. To use. Sewn off with a capital D I Y. This is what is required along with that password. So after you're done with that, you hit save and you gotta fire it up. In order to do that you have to shut down the Wi-Fi and then bring it up as a as a hotspot. Pull that down over there. 
then you say say Wi-Fi is off so just click on Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi settings make sure Wi-Fi is turned on click on the hamburger menu here click on I know it's up but this is what you're probably going to need to do if you can't click on this one that says turn it on click on connect the hidden network come over here to connection select the one we just made hit connect and you have a hotspot running now if you were to check on your phone or something you would see a hotspot with the SSID Sonoff capital DIY and the password to get in is that password and I'm gonna turn it on there we go see a single blink single blink it's trying to connect it's trying to connect there when you see the double connects then you know you're talking to the device from your new hotspot if it's not doing the double blink troubleshoot the hotspot maybe using your phone um, something else that you can access a little better but you have to have that password and you have to have that SSID and then when this sees it it should connect like that with the jumper in jumper's got to be in too next thing we're gonna do is to get the IP address of that device so I cleared the screen so you could see it a little better over there um, this is still blinking but this is a command that you need to use in order to see the IP address of what we're gonna do so let's do that so once you hit this command you'll get all this stuff comes down here and you can see in my case it found two devices this one that's on the E I know that's the Ethernet network so it's a hard line it's the there's a micro Sonoff micro in the basement that I have running uh, EWE link this is this is the information for that but the other one is on the WL interface which it which is my wireless interface on here and also the host name for this is an odd 10 dot host name which I don't have on my network this other one is a 192 168 this matches something that I have on my network so we know we want this one we're gonna need this IP address right here we're gonna use that and we're gonna use this uh -uh, Sonoff ID and we're gonna use those to make a command to test that we are actually talking to our device this is the command so we're gonna use a curl command to send to this address which is the device that's the number that we saw up here and this is a a function inside the device that it's going to do this minus D is for data the device ID is this this device ID is this device ID here and then we're going to do turn switch on and there it went on see the red lights on now we're able to talk to it from our curl command that's a verification that we can do that the next thing we have to do is unlock the mechanism so that it allow this to open up so there's a command for that I came back without an error now we need to check and make sure that it actually did unlock and here we can see the status of everything including OTA unlock true so it is it's unlocked that's what you want to see if we would have did this info command before I guess I could have for you it would have said OTA unlock false so now OTA is unlocked the next thing we got to do is we need to calculate the checksum you know, let me clear the screen for you SHA sum is a command that we're going to use it's it's in Ubuntu already minus a 256 and then we have to put in the path to the file that's where we put that this file before and this is the exact one that we're going to be pulling up so we're going to do a checksum on that let's see if it gives us a number there we go 
we're pointing exactly at that file. This was allowed to read it. And this number here, this long ass number, this is what we need for our next command. The next command is to download the firmware. Here we go, same beginning, HTTP to this server, which is our little Sonoff Mini over there. And we're gonna do the OTA flash function and the data in the JSON is the device ID, data, and the data we're gonna give it is download URL. So now I have to use a path that will get to it from my anywhere in my network. This 192, 168, 108, 42 is the actual IP address in my network of this thing. We're not going to use the 127 here. I hoped that it would work, but it didn't work. You have to fi find the actual IP address of this on your network and put that in there, slash Tasmoda, slash Tasmodalite, dot bin. And then here is SHA sum. So this is, it's, you're giving it data. And then here's the long string that we just calculated from the SHA. Uh, it uses this to check and make sure that the upload was correct. Watch over here, see what this does. This comes back, no error. And this will flash in kind of randomness. See it's doing threes instead of twos. No, it's going away. So you know it's flashing when it gets random and weird like this. Stop for a little bit. So you know it's it's flashing. Don't touch anything. Up. Oh, there's a click. So it's loading Tasmona up now. When it sits here like this, and it's flashing like that, it should be in AP mode for Tasmona. See it? go there's a Tasmona device but that's that device now so let's go into that all right now we're gonna go to a browser and what you want from the browser is you want to open up 192.168.4.1 and there's Tasmona most of you have seen this screen already if not check the Tasmona doc all right I still got four more to do, but we're going to close it up for today. I hope this has helped you. Helped you. I know on Discord we've had a number of people ask, how do you do that? It is a bit complicated. It is a bit PIA. Um, I don't think it's too bad. Once you get the basic setup, it's pretty much like two you convert. It's the same kind of thing. Hope you like my video. Subscribe if you can. I need subscribers. I'd like to get up to the magic thousand so I can do some other things on my site and have a mobile, you know, have my have my phone and do some streams from my phone and stuff like that for my garden. So a thousand is a magic number for YouTube. I would like to get there. So help me get there. Give me a like, subscribe. You can help me out other ways if you want. There's some Patreon link and there's other stuff at the bottom. So thanks for everybody who supports me. And thanks for watching. So we'll look for you again soon. And I'm going to be using one of these, um, one of these buggers right here very soon on my next project. Until then, bye.